Welcome to the basic module of Advanced and Wireless Communications. This course is part of the Colibri project and we are now going to the mobile networks, first to fifth generation, the second part. My name is Andreas Timgil, I'm with Hamburg University of Technology. We have discussed about um, the first the fifth generation already about um, what it should provide. I want to go into the network architecture, how is the services, how is the data right being provided to different users. With UMTS, um, which is third generation, um, we have a network architecture which is based on the GSM network architecture. So we have many things which are very much in sim uh, very similar. We have a new um, radio access network, the Universal Terrestrial Radio Access Network, which is um, you know, the base stations, that's what the antennas you might see, they are communicating with the user equipment or mobile phones. And in the user equipment, we have um, the SIM card, which is the one which identifies the subscriber identifi identification, um, which identifies the user and gives the phone number. The antennas and the radio, um, uh, the radio transceivers and the front end is connected to the radio network controller. The radio network controller decides when to transmit to which user to transmit. So here we have the ra radio resource control. And then we see the history from the GSM network. We have two parts in the core network. One part is for the phone network, for the telephone, for the mobile, for the voice services, and also for circuit switch services. Here we have um, a gateway, um, which is the mobile services, um, uh, the mobile switching center. We have um, several of them, and one interconnects to the radio network controller and um, then to the uh, front and to the um, base station and the user equipment. In GSM, this one was different. We had base stations and we didn't have node Bs. The node Bs, they are base stations in um, UMTS. This is a funny story because they, they were looking for a new name for the base station, the BTS. They couldn't find one and they just called it node, which is any node in the network, B, like base station, and that is the name which we still have. In LTE, we have an evolved node B, E and B, or E and B. Okay, and then the inter extension also already done in GPRS of um, GSM system is um, the packet switched part of the core network. Here we have um, a packet um, switched gateways which then connect to the internet, and all of them um, take make use of the different registers, like the home location register, which gives all the user data which is connected to the authentication and the billing system, and which also has, um, which is also somehow, um, we have the equipment identity register, which for example has blacklisted or stolen phones in it. So what happens, how do we, um, how does this operate? Maybe you can see that an example of an incoming voice call. This incoming voice call comes of course from the packet, sw from the circuit switch network, from the public phone network or from ISDN. It enters the uh, mobile network at the gateway mobile um, switching center, which then would ask the home location register for the um, phone number, and you get um, then the user location, the last known user location, and the um, the switching center which has the um, which is responsible for that. And then the call would be forwarded to the um, mobile switching center. It has a um, visitor location register. There you should find the entry for that user and which radio network controller is responsible. And then you forward the call to the radio network controller. It knows which node B, E node B or node B was responsible, forwards the call request. It's sent over the air interface using white pen CDMA in this case to the mobile phone and the phone rings. We have um, this again um, summarized in this slide because probably this is a bit too fast to follow. We have the gateway um, mobile switching center and the home location register, which I identified by the phone number. The HLR, this home location register, requests the roaming number from the responsible visitor, visitor location register and provides it to the gateway mobile switching center. And then the call is forwarded or routed to the responsible mobile switching center. And so the visitor location register, which is attached to the mobile switching center, we know the responsible RNC and we request the RNC to set up a channel to the user equipment. And this is then paged via the, um, the node B to the, lowest, the last known location area, and then the connection is set up over the node B, and then a link is established on the radio interface, and we have an end at signaling, and the phone rings, finally. And the connection is switched as soon as the call is accepted. 
If we then go for further evolution, we are more and more focusing on data traffic, on data services. We are now um, um, uh, deploying, or we have deployed to a large extent, the fourth generation LTE, which is also called IMT Advanced. Um, the idea is to move to an all IP packet switched connect core network. So what we have seen, the differentiation between circuit switched and um, packet switched does not really make much sense and is very costly in the end. It was necessary in the beginning to have um, the high quality of service requirements or satisfy them for voice and to have the, the data services were attached to the network in, in GSM. But now it makes sense to put all over IP. We look for a new spectrum, um, also what is called here digital di dividend. That is the spectrum I announced someone in the earlier courses that the um, analog f um, television frequencies are very favorable also for mobile communications. They are used um, because, or they can be used because uh, the um, television networks go to digital. They use less bandwidth and some bandwidth is, all, is free now. And this free bandwidth can be used uh, to provide mobile service in particular in rural areas. And that's what we are seeing now. We want to have high data rates in rural areas and LTE in lower frequencies is probably the way to do. We are looking for data rates from 100 megabits to 1 gigabit and a very low or lower delay. And services or systems which satisfy these requirements of this ITU 4G um, vision are WiMAX. That was introduced from 2007. It seems that the race is in favor of LTE. We have less and less WiMAX networks in the, in the world. I know that there were some networks already um, in 2007, 2008, 2009, for example, in, um, in, in Vilnius, there was a city network on WiMAX with high data rate services. But nowadays, most service providers, most networks go to LTE, um, which is the evolution or the transition from UMTS and um, IMT2000 to LTE. Here we have the new network architecture, all IP. We have an OFDM air interface, um, what we introduced also in our course so far, and it's introduced in service since 2009. So what's next? Where are we going next? Um, sorry, that's what's next. So the question is firstly, how do we do it? Um, we have to look at that we um, simplify the network architecture. We think about this all IP. So we don't have the differentiation between circuit and packet switch core. In the core network, we only have um, a serving gateway and a packet, gate, uh, a packet gateway. And um, then we connect to the internet. Um, we have um, e node bees, which um, also have all the control and um, replace also the RNC. So we don't have RNCs in the network anymore. Yeah, so the e node are enhanced node bees. They have also the radio re um, resource management functionality included. And the evolved pa packet core is. Um, is simplified a lot. We still have um, the home subscriber um, server, or we have a home subscriber server, which is um, similar to the home location register. And we have a mobility management entity, which tells us where the user is. On the radio interface, we are also facing some challenges. We want to have the much higher data rates. We want to have lower delays. To, um, to achieve this, we have to, on one side, we have to more quickly adapt to the radio channel. So if we measure or we have an idea of what the radio channel is, we have to go um, and adapt the modulation and coding schemes to really adapt to the um, achievable data rate at that time. And that is where we go down to scheduling for every millisecond. So basically we could schedule every user at every millisecond. So every millisecond we can decide which user to serve on which frequency block with which modulation and coding scheme. This is giving us a really tough requirement on high, on, on, on on the scheduling algorithms and on the radio resource management. And we cannot afford to have um, the radio resource management somewhere far away from the, no from the base station, and that's why we have this enhanced node piece. Also, what we do differently than before, we have a frequency reuse factor of one. This means we give up some of the properties of the cellular system, and we say we can use any frequency in any cell. This, will give us a, or this gives us a headache on how to do interference management because we would reuse the same frequency my neighbor cell is using and I have to somehow adapt to this and learn what the other one is doing. As the um, E node bees are where they signal to each other, but they have to schedule every millisecond, there's no time to tell the other one which you are using. And then you do something like you do some frequencies use in the um, in, in this user equipment close to the base station, some frequencies you use with users which are far away, and they, these ones you would not reuse in the next cell, for example. 
So if you move on to 5G, what do we want to do after this? We want to have something like, we want to satisfy with something like 1,000 more times the traffic volume. We see that the traffic volume is exploding with all the mobile internet access. We want to have maybe 10 to 1,000 times more connected devices. So something like going from 6 billion to 60 billion devices connected to the networks. We want to have 10 to 100 times more data rate. We are thinking about much more latency. So we have still latencies in the order of tens or hundreds of milliseconds. We want to be something like in the millisecond area. We need to have lower energy consumption. And we'll see a lot of new types of connected devices. And um, we see a diversity of use, case, uh, user ca use cases and applications. The main devices you want to take in addition, what can that be? I mean, if you say we have everyone is connected already and you can have one smartphone or two smartphones, you can't have 10 or 100 smartphones. So what we have to think about is, is the Internet of Things and machine-to-machine uh, -machine communications, meaning that um, you will have sensors and actuators in homes and cities communicating or in cars and vehicles. And then you can see that this will easily lead to 10 or 100 times more users. And that will also lead to the next part of our course. But now it's time again for you to think. And these are our references. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>